previously on Fail Proof Kitchen. I want to have a little discussion about cooking methods whenever you want to eat healthy to make it more interesting for you. Wet cooking methods, that's braising, stewing, and things okay, like that. Gotcha. Dry cooking methods, we're talking about sauteing, roasting, grilling, and smoking, and all of those things. I don't, I don't do that. I'm impatient. It's looking good. It's smelling good. <laughs> I'm eating it. Hey y'all, welcome to Fail Proof Kitchen. My name is Jenna Fail. And I'm Chef Robbie Jester, winner of Guy's Grocery Games, Beat Bobby Flay, and Netflix Pressure Cooker. Today we're going to be going over the do's and don'ts of purchasing produce. Well, I think the only thing we're missing from this episode is some produce. Yep, I think it's time we go get us some delicious food to cook. Let's go. What are we doing? Like, what are we looking at produce? Like a good tomato and a bad tomato or just like? Yeah, just in general, like quality indicators, stuff that like I stay away from as like instinct. Like how you choose a cantaloupe and stuff like that. One of my favorite things when I would go to the produce market, like with my chef jacket on and people follow me around and would like pick up produce after me. Oh, yeah, And right. put it back down. So I just started messing with them. They're like, what did he see on this cantaloupe mm -hmm. that made him say no? A grocery store is all pretty standard. Like a produce market, is gonna have like more of a difference between the great stuff and the, the not great stuff. Like the produce in a, in a grocery store, they only buy stuff that looks perfect. And just because it looks perfect doesn't mean that it's delicious. So it's like, they only buy stuff that's marketable. So they won't buy anything that has a seam in it or whatever. So it's like, I n almost never take the front, whatever's in the front. Because people touched because, it. Because people touched it. It's the oldest because they rotated it towards the front. Okay. Um, and often it's the one that they're trying to move out the door. Okay. So like if you flip it over, maybe it's bruised or something like. Right. It's usually like, hey, let me put this up front because somebody will just grab it and I'll look at it. For instance, if I'm in a pinch, I will buy like pre-cut vegetables at the grocery store. Okay. Um, I'll buy zucchini noodles from the grocery store. I'll buy, you know, uh, mirepoix, like carrot, celery, onion mix from the grocery store already cut. You can <laughs> kind of hack your way to a really quick, simple, like beautiful meal at home. But like, let's be honest, I'm not chopping chives to okay. put on top of my fries at home. Uh, unless I'm entertaining or whatever. And right. in that case, I want it to look cuter or I'm cooking for someone that I want to impress. I'm going to do that. But right. as far as like cooking for my wife and myself, Quick, efficient, few pots and pans as, as possible. Sorry. I, every time I get behind those trucks, you can't see. I feel like I'm a good person, and then I get mad when I drive. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not nice. So we got kicked out. We got kicked out so of the they store. They threw us out of the store. I think Jenna's not allowed to go back to her local market anymore. I think but it was the big camera. <laughs> big camera, big personalities, whatever it was. But they didn't uh, like it. We could still go over some of what I wanted to talk about in the store and show you around. Talk about product selection, produce in particular, but talk about some things that some do's and don'ts. So whenever you're buying herbs, leafy greens, or anything like that, you want to look for something that is the same color throughout, mm -hmm. which we talked a little bit about in the store before we got thrown out. So a perfect example is, so basically it is the same color throughout other than the, the light part, which is naturally light. But I don't have any yellowing of the pieces of the, the scallion. It's all very taut, but it's also dry, which is another like quality yep. indicator in the produce section. So when you buy the little herbs and stuff like that in the little packets, sometimes they'll be like moist and you can see like the discoloration. That is a clue that that thing has been either opened and shut or fluctuated temperatures and it's going to deteriorate into nothing when you try to cut it. Moisture breeds bacteria too, right? So you're That's kind of true. at risk for mold. Brings about bacteria and it just accelerates mold. the whole like molding, rotting process. So another thing is like, you know, talking about onions and purchasing onions and, and stuff like that. So a lot of times you look at like the bulk onions and you're like, well, that's a really big onion or something like that. I always buy like the individual bulk onions versus the little tiny bags because you get a higher yield. Yep. So this onion, I have this big onion. Yes, I might cut it in half and wrap half of it up and use it in a week or whatever. But 
I have 20% skin to the rest of the, the onion. But if you buy those little bags, they're usually little yeah. tough onions with tons of skin. And by the time you peel them, you're losing like 50, 60%. So any money that you would have saved by buying in bulk, you're losing because you're losing out on the product. Talking about cucumbers. So cucumbers, I like these. This is a European or a greenhouse hothouse cucumber. Uh, I like these one because the seeds are so much smaller, so it's more palatable, but also it, it, it's well preserved. But you do want to look at the ends here, make sure there's no shriveling. You know, this is nice and smooth there. Same thing here. You want to make sure it's not shriveled up because it'll shrivel at the ends first before it dries out in the rest of the cucumber. Right, now you mentioned you cut into, you cut the ends off both sides. How far yes. up do you cut? So you're gonna cut the end off both sides. The least wasteful way to do it is to cut a portion that you think is appropriate and then taste it. Mm -hmm taste a slice off of it. If it's super bitter, you want to come up a little bit more okay. because the ends of the cucumber are super bitter if you taste them separately. Completely taste different than the center section of the cucumber. And we can test that a little bit later. And then avocados. I know people love avocados. <laughs> you get a dark avocado and it's hard as a brick. How do you pick an avocado? I don't buy them for that exact reason. So it's overwhelming. Avocados are like that tricky sort of thing that you can't go by look. You can't really go by like the, the type of avocado. So what you need to understand is a lot of times they'll store avocados near citrus or near apples or near uh, tomatoes. And all of those different things put off a, a, a gas called ethylene gas. It's gonna make things ripen before they're ready. So it's one of those things that if you're trying to speed ripen something like in your refrigerator, mm -hmm. you can put like an apple in a bag with bananas and kind of get it to speed ripen okay. that way. So you'll notice that you have darker avocados that aren't necessarily like delicious or soft or anything. The best way to pick your avocado, you gotta feel it up. You gotta, you gotta give it a little squeeze. And if the outside of it you feel like is, is a little bit um, These soft. These feel good. These feel good. They're gonna be delicious. Now we had to buy a whole bag of these versus buying one avocado because we tested like five or six avocados in the aisle, uh, pressed down on them. While they were even darker than some of these, they hard. were as hard as a brick. So you're eventually they're gonna ripen, but it might, you have no idea when that thing or how green that thing was when it was picked. Right. So how long it's gonna to take to ripen. Is there any truth to this popping right off? Um, they say that means I it's actually, ready. I've heard I actually that. had never heard that. Really? Um, I think that there would be some truth to that. So, Because these feel good and it popped right off. We were talking off camera a little bit about cantaloupes and melons and things like that, having something called a full slip. So if you imagine this as a cantaloupe, bigger, and then this, this dip in here is very well developed. So on a cantaloupe, that is a quality indicator. It's the same color as, as the rest of the outside. It's not green, mm -hmm. overly green in there and it's fully developed. It has a fully developed dip in there, which means that it was ripened all the way on the plant versus pulled unripe and Early then allowed plant. to ripen uh, after it was pulled. So it is an indicator for a lot of things that it's gonna be. And you can see this one, which is actually a little bit harder than this one. Mm -hmm. It is a little greener. It is. And then to just talk about some quality indicators in general in the grocery store, you know, I always like to shop at a store that specializes in whatever that product is. So I love if you have the capability in your area, going to an Italian market for your meats and cheeses, going to a produce market for your produce, going to a butcher for, for your meats right. and things like that, and going to a seafood place for your seafood. They specialize in that, they know the quality indicators, they move through that product enough so that you can make sure that it really is fresh and you can trust them as experts in their individual field. Now, some general indicators, when you're buying things like meat in the grocery store and stuff like that, you wanna make sure that the fat, whether it's beef or yep. it's chicken, that the fat is, is pearly white. It's not turning any sort of yellow or discoloring or reddening or anything like that. A pearly white fat on a chicken breast or a ribeye is gonna be a quality indicator that that is a good, fresh piece of, of protein. And that's basically it for the basics of product selection. Now we have all this beautiful food. We went shopping. We got the right stuff to cook with. We've got the right utensils. Now it's gonna be time for us to throw down and cut this up cut and up. then cook it up. Let's go. Next time on Fail Proof Kitchen. Today we are going to make famous crab cake recipe. So you wanna grab like four or five little pieces of that and then you can show them your knife skills. Oh, I'll try to grab the scissors. I could, just, I could just go in like that. <laughs> or we can chop them on the, on the board and show what we've been learning. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm.